Juliet with guns and hot cars in this contemporary setting. Now, when you heard about this, did you get the idea right away? I, I didn't get it right away because I was a I was almost uh, a part of it. You know, I, I started off with Baz and it was the director Baz Luhrmann, and he proposed this idea to me of doing a, a contemporary sort of fantasy world world of with Romeo and Juliet, and I didn't quite get it at first, but then we explored a lot of different ideas. I mean, there were times when there was like the character, he wanted the characters to sort of jump around and rollerblades, and I was like, no, 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 that's not going to work. And then we finally sort of pinpointed what what were the most important parts of, of the play, which was the, you know, the violence and the, um, the two opposing families and bringing sort of guns instead of swords. I mean, what a sword sort of meant back then. I mean, at any time you could go to battle and you could die, so, sort of like now with the guns. You know, a lot of people carry them around, and we wanted to bring that in, and the religious aspect and sort of love triumphing over hate. And um, so we really, when, we, when he really started to focus on that, everything started to become really clear. And I think that and when I started filming, it felt almost like we weren't doing Shakespeare for a little while just because everything just felt so real, you know? And, and I finally saw the movie, and, and, and it worked. It wasn't like I needed to, like, adjust, you know? Like, I needed, like, a half an hour to say, okay, what the heck is going on here before I could under get into the story? It was, like, one or two minutes, and then, bam, okay, I know what's going on, you know? Now, do you love Shakespeare personally? I can't say that I was, uh, you know, neither here nor there with him. All I knew was... You know, just like any other person my age, you hear Shakespeare, like, oh, God, you know, those long-winded plays that you just don't understand, that you have no clue about. And then I finally, when I really, you know, read Romeo and Juliet for real and really understood what was going on, it was something so timeless that, uh, you know, something that sort of defied the time and sort of molds into what's going on in our, in our lifestyle now. And the character Romeo was such a, such a, such a, it was like one of the earliest rebels, you know? He rebelled against his entire family for love, you know? And I thought that was a profound sort of thing. And uh, once I started to get into it, and I realized what sort of a ballsy guy he was by by marrying Juliet and, like, saying no to his family and all his friends and everything just for this girl. And she, she like, tells him, all right, if you love me, then marry me. Let's see what you got. And he does it, and he sort of risks his whole life for it. And it was a great character, you know? That's right. You're shooting Titanic, your first big kind of commercial first picture. One, yeah. No, that's not the kind of thing you're usually drawn to. Not, not usually. I can't say it will always be either. I mean, I'm. I want to try something new. You know, I want to. You can't. You can't sort of do the same thing over and over again. Not to say that I, that I have because I don't believe I have. But I, I'm stuck to sort of lower budget things, which I actually like to do better, just because it gives you, uh, you know. You're more involved, I think. But I wanted to just have this experience just for the sake of sort of having it because you've got to try different things in life, you know? And uh, not saying that that's what I'm going to stick to because I don't believe that, but, you know, it couldn't hurt. But you're drawn to this because it's another, like this, romantic story. It's another romantic story. It's a love story about two people on the Titanic. And then, I mean, it's a beautifully written story. And it's, um, it's uh, I mean, it's the ultimate, I mean, the ultimate tragedy all these people just sort of dying and the up and then you have the whole upper class and lower class thing sort of going on too i mean what happened on the titanic was they they, they thought that they had a, a boat that was completely unsinkable then they hit an iceberg and they started to sink and nobody believed that they were sinking so then all the first class passenger got got on the lifeboats and there was only enough lifeboats to save like uh, you know 30 percent of the people on the ship because that's how unsinkable they thought the ship was so then all the people in the first class just stayed around the ship on their lifeboats, and then everybody else just sort of was sitting there in the water, freezing to death, dying, and nobody ever came back to get them except for one boat. And so it's a tragic, just a horrible story, and it's also real, too, which really got me attracted to it. It's not like doing, you know, Cyborg 7 or something. <laughs> yes.